I have some bad climate change news from both the North Pole and the South Pole. First in the South Pole in Antarctica, scientists have been watching a growing crack in a major ice shelf called Larsen C, which is slightly smaller than Scotland. Mm -hmm. It's a 350 meter thick ice uh, 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 th meter thick ice shelf that's floating on top of ocean waters. And the crack has grown to 30 kilometers in length from 2011 to 2015 and widened by 200 meters in the last few years. And in the last six months alone, this has accelerated even further, growing another 22 kilometers in the last six months. It may only be a matter of time before we see the loss of a huge chunk of Larsen C. This would be a historic event. This would uh, drastically impact the oceans. It would not be good. It would be yet another sign of the very quickly uh, 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 drastically negative effects of climate change. The amount of ice that could be lost would be around 6000 square kilometers. Now, that's the South Pole in the North Pole. Things are not really any better. Scientist Peter Wadhams believes that the summer ice cover at the North Pole is about to disappear, triggering even more warming of our planet. He also adds that most people expect that this year we will see a record low in the summer ice cover. This has huge potential impact and it impacts the entire planet. Uh, one issue is what's called albedo feedback. Sea ice reflects a lot of solar radiation back into space. Water reflects very little. Ice reflects about 50 percent of solar radiation, water only 10 percent. So you might say, OK, yeah, well, but ice ice up in the North Pole, I don't really care. That's not going to affect me. Well, not only are we talking about sea level rise due to melting ice, but we're also talking about significantly more solar radiation actually staying here on our planet. And whenever we talk about melting sea ice, Jason, there are the climate deniers who say, David, people have been scaring us about the no sea ice in the North Pole during the summer for 10 or 15 or 20 years, and we still have some every summer. We have less every summer and there's no indication that that trend is changing. So I for me, when someone says, but that's been predicted for a long time and it hasn't yet happened. Well, we're getting closer every single summer. Are, are, are you suggesting we wait until there is no sea ice whatsoever before we take action? It seems insanely short sighted. Yeah, all these climate deniers are just, you know, ostriches, ostriches keeping their head in the sand and pretending nothing's going to happen. I, one thing I like to look at or I have looked at in the past, there's a story about Mont Blanc in France and these glaciers there. And you can see, I think it was the 80s, the 90s, you know, the, the zeros and then the teens. And it, it's not even there anymore. And, you know, just 30 years ago, it's this massive glacier with huge rivers. And now it's it's almost almost drought status there. Yeah. And, you know, as an individual, bringing your own grocery bags to the store and biking to work. That's fine. Right. But uh, uh, and and to the extent that it makes someone feel like they're doing their part, I support that. And if everybody did that, that actually could make a difference. But we're talking about a planet with billions and billions of people here, and we need major, major change. I'm not laughing off people who bring their own grocery bags to the supermarket. I do it myself. But what I'm talking about is that we really need way more of a sense of urgency here.